when I came back, uh, we got you and Sandy Harcourt and Kelly Stewart and, and the Fauna and Fauna International, and we set up the Gorilla Mountain, Pro Mountain Gorilla Project there and then, mm. uh, which started to raise money and eventually it raised a lot of money. And, and still continues is. in a new mm. guise to this mm. day. Yeah. Yeah. Bill Weber was one of the key players responsible for implementing the Mountain Gorilla Project in Rwanda. When he began, more than half the people told him they thought the area should be cleared for agriculture. Convincing the local people of the value of gorilla conservation wasn't going to be easy. The Mountain Gorilla Project started officially in the summer of 1979 and had three main components. One was to improve park protection and security, hire more guards, train them better, start an education program that you, so that you not only had millions of people around the world who cared about gorillas, but that you had at least thousands of Rwandans who knew and cared about gorillas. But what became the linchpin of the Mountain Gorilla Project was the tourism program. We went to the Park Service and said, you can make a lot more money off of tourism if you set up a program that has gorilla-based tourism at its heart. The term ecotourism didn't exist at the time, but it really was a prototype of that. There's just nothing quite like being in and among mountain gorillas. People will pay practically whatever's asked here in Rwanda. Mountain gorillas are exceedingly tolerant of a human presence. They just seem to almost love having the company. <laughs>